Hola muchachos, welcome here. I decided to amp up my green juice and add a little bit of spirulina. I actually haven't done that to like any of my juices at all. Usually I'm someone that adds spirulina to my smoothies. Yes, but I haven't been having smoothies because I can't have any type of banana or date or dried fruit or sugar. So my smoothies just don't get too sweet. So I decided to put spirulina in here and like, I like it. For today's vlog, I'm gonna talk a little bit about intentional shopping, especially when it comes to me who has labeled myself as a minimalist. I'm gonna talk to you guys more about that in a little bit. And in all that, doing some home decor. We moved to this house about a year ago and I really came into this house with the mindset of almost, <laughs> hey guys. Didn't see you. Oh, I did see you there. <laughs> it just looks hilarious in my viewfinder. Almost keeping everything very blank. The house that we lived in before this one was very full. Not that we had a lot of items, but just even our small amount of items really filled up that space. It was like less than 800 square feet, one official bedroom. Everything else was just very small and cramped, especially with a family of five. So when I moved to the space, I was actually really enjoying a lot of the blank space that we had. And please know I am still enjoying it and don't feel like I wanna buy extra furniture or other things to really fill it up. But we have areas in our house like these shelves behind me that are empty and aren't done well. And I honestly, I don't know how to decorate. I've never been gifted with decorating. I can kind of do color, but I can't just do decorating in general. Hence these shelves. <laughs> what are these shelves? Oh, this is definitely going to be my main project today. We got these shelves custom built when we moved in and very nice to have. We still need to get tiling on there. That is still happening. As you can see, we have a lot of blank space and I do just want to fill this up because I feel like through kind of the rest of the house, there there isn't a lot of stuff. And if I'm gonna fill up a space, it's going to be shelves and I'm gonna probably fill it up with books and plants. So that's what we're gonna do. Ooh, the lighting. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I feel like the shelves are like my main thing. I do have some decor and pots and plants that I need to organize in there. And I'm also going to do a little bit of plant propagation, which is basically just taking a mama plant and making baby plants from it and encouraging roots to grow so you can replant and make more mama plants, which later you can have more baby plants. I hope you guys enjoyed this video coming from more of like a minimalist point of view. I didn't want to go to winners and all these different places and buy trinkets and stuff. My home decor is beneficial and actually usable for the most part. Anyway, we're in the basement of our house and I feel like we're almost done in a lot of ways. I wanna switch up some of this artwork up here a little bit. There's some stuff I definitely wanna do, probably not today because everything is a work in progress and we don't get everything done in one single day. But on one side is the office and then on the other side is kind of the kids play area. I wanted to make this area kind of more playful and fun. So I have some nice tassels like hanging from kind of the ceiling and draping down. And I also have these two shelves. I bought them from Anthropology, and the hardware is actually from Amazon and I can link it down below if I can find it. They're super cool and I love how they look, but there isn't really much on them. I just kind of chuck things on and I'm like, that'll do for now, but not anymore. Now I want to decorate, I want to decorate, put stuff up there, make it look nice. I'm just gonna quickly clean up those toys so this looks nice. We have toys and educational stuff in there, the dollhouse and then their coloring table, PS. The kids' devotional coloring pages are pretty sad. The kids can choose from exile, mourning, or idolatry. That's where we're in the Bible right now. I do have an empty spot on this wall and I have a rug that I ordered probably 10 years ago that I wanna put right there. It's like a wall tapestry, also help with some of the echo. But what I really need to do is decorate these shelves, which is is gonna bring us outside. I finally went ahead and bought some pots for my plants. Previously, my plants were just in like the usual plastic bins, but I obviously wanted to get something nicer. So I thrifted and I also did go to HomeSense and buy some pots. So some of these are thrifted, some of these are HomeSense and they're like so cute. So now my plants actually have little homes <laughs> within the home. And then with that, I wanna show you guys a few thrift store finds. Some really cool books. I got Tom Sawyer, cause I wanna read that with the kids. I got ballerina. I also got a writer's American America, the illustrated history of British Columbia because that's where we live. I also got some more pots from there and like little jugs. This one is so cool. It has like a basket weave all around it. Some more little pots 
pants. This one's wooden, and this is like my new favoriteest thing. It's like a long gold frame. I paid, I think, $2 for this, and then I just printed out some black and white photos of all the kids when they were babies, and then a recent photo of us, but the detail is so pretty, I love. I think between this stuff and the stuff outside, we should be pretty good. It doesn't seem like a lot, and I understand that, but I think you guys would be surprised, or maybe you already know, a small amount of items can do a lot for a space. Hey, sorry, Kieran. My camera's on your piano. <laughs> Bring this down a little bit. We need a plant. Right here, Sarah, can you put a graphic right here? Bink! Right there, we need a plant. Can you take that plant with the hanger down? And I almost feel like we should leave the ceramic bell. We should leave it. That'd be hilarious. Every time someone comes in, we can ring it. Okay, Kieran's gonna take this plant down so I can use it downstairs. Yeah, put it back up. That's hilarious. No, it's not hilarious. It's terrible. Oh, it looks so... Ooh. I kind of like it. It looks Let's ring it. unintentional. Let's ring it. I want to ring it It's not very satisfactory at all. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. the shelves they look so good so on this one I kept that plant and I just added like that wooden kind of holder I have the crayons in there so the kids can actually see the colors and just a kids book and then here I decided to put the pothos and I made just a little picture that was a extra in an order that someone gave me it was free that little picture and I put it on a piece of sample wood that actually came from our table so using what we got it looks cute it's not too busy I would love to put some sort of like a cork board here so the kids can hang their artwork because right now we have a lot of artwork hanging in their rooms and I think it'd be cute to have some right here too but looking good it's minimal but a little bit fuller and pleasing to the eye <laughs> a lot of people think a minimalist doesn't own anything or they own like the absolute least amount that someone could own and I think that resonates even more when it comes to the idea of home decor when people think of a minimalist and I just want to debunk some things for you guys I have a few friends that claim to be vegans are they completely vegan no when I talk to them they say maybe a couple times a year they will have a bit of dairy or a little bit of meat but the reason they call themselves a vegan is to kind of keep themselves accountable for a certain goal. Their goal is to eat as plant-based as possible and reap the benefits from that. I have a friend, same thing, but instead it's paleo and she says, I eat a paleo-based diet, but once in a while she'll have some rice. When it comes to classifying ourselves as something, a lot of the time we use that to encourage us to continue in that way of life. Am I a minimalist that has like 40 items to my name? No, but I call myself a minimalist for a couple different reasons. Reason number one is that I don't own anything and that goes from home decor to clothing to kitchen items that I do not use on a weekly or every other week basis. Some people have things in their lives that they won't touch for months or even years. I don't have anything like that in my house. I work through all my clothing within two weeks easy. If we have games, we play games. If I have a kitchen appliance, I'm going to be using it often. Me and my family just don't have anything in our house that we just don't use or have for the sake of having. P.S. If you're new here, I'm just letting my bed breathe. That's why the blankets are on the ground and my bed is not made. Today is supposed to be extremely hot, so maybe I'll make my bed, but just with the sheets. And also by naming myself a minimalist, it keeps me accountable while I shop. Because I feel like when it comes to shopping, that is where minimalism proves itself or just completely fails. 
Whenever I have a need to purchase something, I write it down on my phone under my notes. I have a notepad that says shop, and in that, I write down things that we need in this house. Recently, for example, we just bought some pots for some plants because our plants didn't have any pots, so we needed to get some pots. There were also some books that I was wanting to get, and I found some nice ones at the thrift store, which was a total score for me. And when I go shopping, I don't stretch beyond my list. If there is something that I see that I like that is not on my list, I don't purchase it because I don't obviously have need for it because I haven't written it down in my need notes. I bought a lot of the pots at HomeSense and easily a place where you can just get out of control, spend a lot of money and come home with a bunch of things and you don't know where to put them. You don't know what to do with them and you're kind of like, this was cute in the store, but it's not so cute now that it's in my house. Minimalism for me is not owning anything that I don't use, not having any amounts of things that we do use in excessive numbers, you could say. Never buying something because it's cute or I like it, but just buying the things that we need. That goes with home decor, and as you can see with the home decor that I have, it's very much plant-based because I think plants are very cool. They clean the air, and I like how they look, and it's a lot of books because obviously books are beneficial, and we are a huge book family. intimidated by any of this stuff right now. I almost thought I would because again, I'm not good at decorating. Plants save me a lot, a lot when it comes to decorating. I also have some awesome friends who have sent me different ways to decorate and style bookshelves. Some of it is like, there's like a kind of trigonometry and then they also encourage staggering. Like things shouldn't look the same from shelf to shelf. Everything should be cohesive but staggered. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. For example, you can see in this picture here, the books are all staggered, the plants are staggered, and then they have various items in between or around. Now, it's a little bit too decorative for me, but it gives me the idea of what I need to do. I'm kind of struggling with these like up here. Those are a bunch of Bible commentaries and I kind of want them to all stay together, but maybe what I'll do is flip some on their side to kind of break it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Let's just, let's just get going and see how this turns out. I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the downstairs and the shelves in a little bit. But first I'm doing a little bit of a plant swap, which I've been doing a lot today. In this room we have a good amount of warm tones from the floor to the wood to some of the other kind of decor on the wall. And even though the walls are white and very cool, I wanted to cool it down even more. It's like a really cool cement pot that I got at HomeSense. It was on clearance for 10 bucks and I put a Marble Queen Pothos in here. The vines are gonna like really come down and take over this whole thing. And then I wanna get a nice big warm print behind it. I don't know if I'll paint it. I don't know if I'll get someone else to. I don't know what exactly, but I want something kind of big and warm behind it. I'm thinking maybe like a gold frame, like really bring some cool hardware, I guess, into this room. So yes, pothos there. And then here in the basement, I think on top of the kids' little toy area, I'm just gonna move that brown paper. Oh, don't roll, buddy. And use the plant to hold the paper. Yeah. I think I'll put that right there. That's a type of philodendron. Kind of like a pancake plant, but more heart-shaped. And now, let's show you guys the shelves. up this home decor 
video and show you guys just a couple other things that I have done. Firstly, come over here. I have my plant propagation wall. This basket is by Poppy's Treasures, Poppy's Little Treasures. Did I say basket? I meant shelves. It does have like a basket-esque quality to it, but it's pretty much hung there and it's two little shelves in here. I have my propagated plants. I gotta change out the water every couple days, make sure my little plants are always submerged in the water. Here's a little bird's eye view, looking pretty cute. We had nothing on this wall and it was very empty and I wanted to start doing some more plant propagation. So this works quite nicely and I find that it doesn't kind of like take up the whole wall. It's just a nice little spot right there where I keep my plant. Going over here, here, check out this crazy mess. This was the frame that I thrifted at the thrift store. I paid two bucks for this and I have pictures of, look at all my little babes, Calvin, Ivy, and Elizabeth all around the same age and then a current picture of us in this really nice kind of like vintage gold colored frame. So that's adorable. I like how it's really thin and it just sits on this wall nicely. And I've also just been enjoying our beautifully done shelves. I feel like they look great. They're easy to use, books, plants, all that good stuff, all this, well, good stuff. And lastly, I just wanted to show you guys our hanging plant here. Ta-da! So this used to be on our shelf, but we decided to move it here. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It is a blue fern something. I like it, and it replaced our pothos, which is now downstairs. I feel like everything came together quite nicely, extremely affordable, and still minimal in the sense that we don't have a ton of knickknacks, things we won't be using that we're kind of using as decor. My shelf propagates my plants. My other shelves hold my other plants and books that we read. I pretty much just put plants everywhere. That's exactly what this whole video was. Me distributing plants. All the same, I hope you guys liked today's video. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on it and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!